with none of my friends. I turn the dial to ABC to see the creep of the week that Bobby Donald defends. But I'm out of crack. With your host, Keith Barney. And Dr. Michael Joseph and Deglio. Way back in high school, most every night, my mom watched QVC, so I miss the practice. There was no TiVo, what could I do? Wait 15 years, get fat, then stream it on Hulu. Out of Some of us use one shots to cover costume changes. Professionally. <laughs> Providing an update on our host's medical condition. And welcome to the Out of Practice Podcast, a weekly podcast working our way episode by episode through season five of David E. Kelly's award-winning series, The Practice. Today, we are up to season five, episode four, Appeal and Denial. It is Out of Practice, episode 88, and I have a big announcement to make. This is the midway point of The Practice. We are a full halfway through David E. Kelly's award-winning series the practice now we are not uh halfway through oops because we have all of the bonus episodes but in terms of there was 167 episodes of the practice and we are now halfway through that if you would believe it how's it going mike uh, it's going well. Uh, thank you. We only have a brief amount of time. Obviously, there is a great deal of concern for the well-being of our hosts, seeing the recent outbreak in our government and in our community. Uh, the second wave officially has begun of the coronavirus, uh, as mm-hmm, mm-hmm. told by the, um, uh, we can only call it surprising, shocking revelations that shocking. the upper echelons of our government have been infected with the coronavirus. Uh, and we know that your concerns, dear listener, uh, are mm. more are more focused around the well-being of the uh, captain, the host, the president, if you will, of our podcast, Keith Varney. So I will be taking any questions uh, from our, uh, well, from you, uh, who will speak on behalf of our listeners and ask any questions you might have about the well-being of Mike and Keith. I uh, am a professional when it comes to podcast corona. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, first off, Clearly, uh, one of your co-hosts has some, uh, uh, well, both of you have some conditions uh, that might make you more vulnerable. Uh, both of you are uh, septi-octogenarians, mm-hmm. semi-octogenarians, mm-hmm. Uh, or very close. Uh, one of you is, um, what's what's the term they've been using for Trump? Morbidly obese? Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, for the, for our lay uh, layman viewers, we'll say, listeners, uh, fat. A big fat fatty. Yeah, I think is. uh, So do you have any concerns based on age and uh, girth? Uh, I do, in fact, Uh, not to mention our our co-host Keith has shown a propensity for violent food poisoning, which can Mm -hmm. be a factor. Mm -hmm. Also, Mm -hmm. huffing and puffing simply by standing up and down. Mike has been known to suffer from uh, and they, they're, you know, it has been reported widely in the. Pro- oh, your crop came back, and we're gonna have to address that. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, continue the bit. This will be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, so, go. Uh, so any, hold, concern, uh, any concerns yeah. about a uh, rapid size increase? Yes, we've seen that happen more than usual. Logically, yes. Uh, not to mention, Mike has been uh, reported widely uh, to be becoming addicted to. Uh, sleepy time Xanax, as they say. Mm, mm. So uh, we have concerns. I'll say that we have concerns. The good news I'd like to just make sure everybody knows is that there has been proper social distancing between the hosts of at least a good mile and a half. Yes. Uh, and that is expanding rapidly, relatively shortly. So we don't have any concerns in the short term of worsening effects physically. However, we do we do predict some declining 
quality in their uh, podcast output, which is saying something since it's pretty bad to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, mental facility has never been something we've even bothered to test because it's right here in black and white. Uh, Coffee, OBS, elephant. (laughs) I've been working on my job. How's that? How was that? (laughs) Well, it did sound like it had a medical condition. Okay. So, uh, which I should point out, uh, historians, we are recording this on October 3rd, uh, where... I guess the uh, bit's over. The bit's Trump over. has been diagnosed with COVID either uh, 72 or 36 hours ago, based on what we were told versus what he actually was. Um, so obviously, this is a strange time, and uh, we certainly wish him a healthy recovery so that he may go to prison. Yeah. <sighs> Man, there is a jackhammer and saw. Hopefully, I've noise gated it out so you don't hear it, but it is driving me insane. So, you know, we watched the uh, Walter Reed physician, Physicians, the incredible team that is caring for the president, came and gave a press conference today. And what was weird about the press conference, other than the clear obfuscation of truthiness, is that it was a professionally, pro- not produced, professionally uh, given respected, respectable press conference from people I respect as medical professionals that were clearly coached and told where the parameters of what they could say were given. However, I kept saying to my wife, it feels weird to be watching something that seems legitimate. Now, which apparently was, turned out not to, to be, be legitimate. illegitimate. Yeah. Completely, profoundly untrue. That's why I think the, uh, the juxtaposition in real time was so amazing. Like when you watch Kelly McEnany speak, you just, you don't, you just, first of all, you if you are, why? It just kind of, it's noise because you know she's just throwing feces at you. Yeah. Here, it was medical professionals, people you generally respect. And I'm trying to compute in real time. Well, I know what they're saying is BS because there's no way any of this is true. Clearly, we know the guy's been sick for days now, has, has, profoundly put people at the highest levels of our government, not to mention innocent donors to his own re-election campaign in in great jeopardy. But he's been doing that all along. So nothing is surprising whilst everything is surprising. And they keep saying on all the news channels, and yes, all of the news channels are paid to hype, but that this is such a national security issue and and a, a critical time for our government. And I keep thinking to myself, that may well be true. What is happening in a story? It is literally <laughs> imploding. That I could actually hear. And in real time, I'm like, yeah, but hasn't it been this nuts? It's this. It's felt like this for months, if not years. It's crazy, Keith. Well, and and I mean, <sighs> and of course, like we we don't know. I mean, honestly, like there is some significant concern that in a few days this might be pretty dicey and and we all certainly hope that that doesn't happen whether or not the patient deserves it uh but it is a it's pretty astounding i mean and and these medical professionals still like ask me what time it is what time is it keith well clearly uh we are in a spot in linear time Can you say what time it was yesterday? Well, yesterday was a time. Right now, I can tell you it is not the same time as yesterday. Can you say in the past 72 hours, Mm -hmm. can you give us any specific time, specific time that it ever was at any Mm -hmm. point? Well, there are a great deal of specific times um, throughout time. So, you know what? I didn't think that was going to work out, but it is pretty spot on exactly <laughs> what would happen. So, it's and crazy. It's weird because we're all, I'm a fiend. I'm, look, I'm a looky loo. Even though I'm pissed when there's traffic, I'm, I still take a peek at the accident when we go by. Look, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be a hypocrite here. But it, it, Jen, every two minutes, because I've, I'm trying to like prepare for this podcast just to divert myself from the world. And Jen will be like, so, this Republican has coronavirus. They're saying that this is happening. And she keeps giving me the CNN updates because I turn that shit off on my phone. And I'm like, 
what what emotion am I supposed to feel? Outrage? Shock? Surprise? Because none of this is surprising, shocking, or I feel like I've I've flooded my adrenaline glands with so much outrage over the past years that there's not a lot yeah. left, and that is scary. Well, I, it's I forget what commentator said. We between last time we recorded, there was also the debate. Oh, right, the debacle that was the debate. You thought this was a shit show. Oh my god, it, we seem like we could potentially we could have had a more entertaining debate. Well, clearly was, we would have had a more entertaining debate, but. Well, I I think like the one of the I think the the commentator I forgot exactly who it was or what network said after the debate that that was the performance by Trump of somebody who knows that he's going to lose but he's going to burn it all down on his way out, and we didn't realize that meant uh, immediately. And mm-hmm. what he's burning down is himself and everyone who supports him. So he's. Like, he's literally just the entire leadership of the RNC, half of the Senate, his entire team, himself, his what? Like, he's doing it to himself. So he's he's sort of lighting his own dick on fire to yeah, and it's, it's, own I'm the gonna, libs. I'm going to iterate, iterate, what? Reiterate but, but, what I just said again, because it's the, it's the fi- place I f- think a lot of Americans, a lot of just people find themselves in. Once again... None of that surprised me. Was it infuriating? Absolutely. I had to turn it off because it just wasn't good for my anxiety and I knew I'd get more substance from just like the recap. But still, yeah. what Chris Wallace is shocked that that's how it went. He wasn't prepared for that. Uh, you know Biden was prepared for that. I just didn't think he would, it would, he didn't think, nobody thought it would go to the egregious levels of interruption it did. But nobody's shocked. And it, 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 I, I think what's, You know, talk about the definition of insanity, you know, uh, doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. It's it's like he says exactly what he's going to do. He is nothing if not maddeningly consistent. So. And everyone's like, I can't believe he did the thing he's been doing the whole time and saying I'm actively going to do. It's uh, it's insane. Anyway, uh. Our one Sorry, none of this, is like, this. Yeah, this was not where we expected to go. I I pulled an audible with the the jacket just because I happened to have had it out, and I just watched the doctor talk. Code. So, yeah. uh, oh boy, yeah. So, what's going on in your life other than the 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 country burning? Uh, we're full on. It's pack. We're pack, 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 packing. I have my Verizon FiOS set up. Nice. I have. Uh, we have a plan of attack. I. You know, I, I kind of have been avoiding it, really kind of dealing with the fact that, look, we don't know what the future holds. I do have every intention of coming back to this area, um, maybe not living in the city, actually never living in the city, but uh, maybe purchasing a home in your neck of the woods or yeah. in the surrounding areas. So this is definitely already strategically decided to be a temporary sort of relocation. Anything could happen, though. Yeah. So I I. It is still the end of an era. This will be 21 years-ish I've lived in New York City, uh, mm. which is, you know, pretty amazing when you when you think about it. All the, the, the trials and tribulations that my 20s and 30s kind of held for me. And uh, this past week, a few days ago, I went up to uh, a, a new colleague's fr- a house to help him sort of mic his room for this little concert he was doing. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, our buddy. And what an amazing guy and what an amazing apartment. But he was, it's sort of like his concert was sort of like a spiritual thing for him. Uh, and yeah. so he didn't want, I couldn't just like sit in there. He did like, a live piano concert. Yeah. And so I was just helping him mic it. And then I, but he's using my, my gear. So I stuck around the neighborhood while he was playing. And I actually put my iPod on and was listening to him play while I was just walking around Riverside Drive uh, with a beautiful New York skyline. And I, I, I pitched a seat on one of a bench and I'm just watching New York City and listening to his kind of really emotional playing. And Mm -hmm. I just had the moment. I didn't expect to have it, but I had the moment where I sort of just took stock of everything that I've accomplished and didn't accomplish and Mm -hmm. the new chapter I'm in and all kinds, just, you know, sort of had a moment of therapy for an hour and just wept and wept and Mm -hmm. wept. Not sadness. You know what I mean? It's just like it came out. No, I do. And and it's exactly what I needed. And now I'm kind of like, Lip, and now I'm ready to just proceed. Let's get out of here. Let's move. Let's start 
let's figure out what's next, you know? And, and that was, that's what I've been up to. But what about you guys? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I, I totally get that. And we're, we're still staying in the city proper. We're, we're, we're moving out to the, the sixth borough. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, certainly it is a transition for, for everybody really. And I've been here 19 years so you you were here for part of college, um, so but it's still like, I mean, it counts. So it, it it still has been my entire adult life. Um, you know, I was in Brooklyn and now I'm now I'm in Queens, and you know I'm not going out nearly as far as you are. But yeah, it's a huge huge transition, and you know for us we're going from apartment living and still sort of feeling like a like a college kid who finally got their first apartment and now realizing oh god I'm much much older than that and so going into home ownership we had our inspections uh this week which was really quite the event um in an undisclosed location on the east coast Jillian if you're listening for an, for an undisclosed <laughs> price tag for an undisclosed price tag uh a, a big one insane uh but we had we went through that and we had three different inspection people there at the same time and uh it's it's intense to to walk through the house and go up in the attic and it looks like we're gonna need to replace the roof which is well we kind of knew that was gonna be yeah was gonna happen and we're now sort of gonna begin the negotiation process with the homeowners to figure out what to do about that after a secondary inspection to have a roofer come in and do the estimate it's adult man it's adulting so hard and it's it's uh it's crazy we're all we know we're halfway through i'm just i'm envisioning it's the potential exists that by the time we're all the way through i could be on to my next move and hopefully you'll be established yeah, well, hopefully we will be uh, returning to being neighbors by then. Insane. Well, my my list of friends have dwindled quite substantially over the past <laughs> some years. So, uh, if 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 on the list anywhere on our needs for looking for a place is be near friends, there's a good shot you're gonna. We're gonna I'm telling with you, uh, I really recommend undisclosed location on the East Coast. Yeah, it, unfortunately, when I type that into Zillow, uh, mm, oh, mm. I didn't even say uh, there is some man. So trivial, but this we do a podcast. Of course, we talk about ourselves. Um, <laughs> that is the so, only reason to have a podcast. Not only did I have that cathartic moment, right, where I kind of just like dealt with New York, but also I realized not realized this is always part of the game. But look, all kinds of things are happening interactively anyway. So being farther away doesn't really affect the careers yeah. we're in, which is kind of awesome. And on top of that, literally days ago, maybe two days ago. I got a text from one of my neighbors being like, have you seen this crap? They're selling our whole building. Oh, yes. So that can, I, you know, my neighbors like to believe that could equal a big buyout. Like they try to, they buy, they sell it and try to buy everybody out of their leases, which that's not really how it works anymore, unfortunately. Nobody owns anything in this building. It turns out probably more likely than not to just be a major headache. Somebody being like, hey, guess what? You got 90 days move. So- it feels to me like we dodged a bullet. So I, or I they're feel probably going to renovate the apartments one by one, right? And so everyone will just be living with noise. And so as people move out, they'll renovate the apartment, and everybody is misery for two years. So I know that uh, not only do we have a lot of updates clearly as hours tick by, but uh, a lot uh, we have at least one. We have some things to deal with, so we should move on to a, another segment we like to call. Uh, oh, I, sh- I should have done that more. In fact, we are going to listen to what our subscribers, what our listeners, what our dear friends and colleagues out in the universe have to say in a segment we like to call. Filings and subpoenas. Filings and subpoenas. Filings and subpoenas. Filings and subpoenas. Well... It's so funny that we sang along with that bumper (laughs) because we have a bumper to pick with one of our most frequent uh, uh, contributors to the podcast and most frequent critic of the podcast, Mr. Phoenix Cage, has pointed out that Mike on our video, Mike's audio is almost half a second ahead of his video. This is the second episode. I noticed it, so I had to mention it. And I believe, because I went back and checked, that what you mean is while we're singing along and dancing to the bumpers, which technologically, 
I could ex- I could spend 45 minutes explaining why he's out of sync just for that section of it, uh, which I will spare you. But yeah, there's there's a lot happening technologically, and I he's definitely not half a second in the normal sections. During the bumpers, we're just gonna have to deal with the fact that we're uh, we're gonna be singing along and dancing at a different beat because of how technology and the universe and space and time audio works. drift resyncing look it, actually on mac it was a lot easier because what i was able to do well look it has a bunch of stuff to do but i was it was a lot easier to add an audio delay to my incoming audio on mac uh, i figured out kind of how to do it here so i'm going to experiment over the next few weeks but what i was doing before just i, I know phoenix gets it cuz he's a he's a tech kind of guy but I was masking the entire episode, right? I was masking my video feed and then placing this video feed on top of this video feed and then audio syncing it backwards so that we appeared pretty much in sync throughout. But that's like doubled the render time. It doubled everything. It doubled my editing time. And I realized like, it ain't that important to anybody that I be spending this much time on this crap. So uh, not that we don't appreciate... uh, the, the 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 your time and your your <laughs> what I'm saying is it is what it is that's, that's what I'm saying <laughs> well it's <laughs> as long as I, I run the it just you know but uh, peek behind the curtain I run the bumpers on my soundboard here and so and I'm and they are recorded onto my Pro Tool so I'm recording I guess we are going to explain it so I'm recording uh my voice and the bumpers on my local Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And so Mike is hearing me and the bumpers through Skype. So -hmm. there's obviously a delay going on there. And Mike is recording his voice and the the practice episode audio on his side. And so when we're putting everything together, we have to line up four different things. But because the video can't be... We can't change in the video when he hears the bumper come in. It's just never going to be synced uh, right because we don't have control over space and time. Yeah, and what's even weirder is that I then take your HD audio that you record locally and I sync it to the Skype audio that I'm hearing to try to keep us the conversation timing about right. And what is weird is that on occasion, my sync is really good with the with your bumper. It's just, ran, it's sort of random. And a lot of that has to do with audio drift and frame rates and all kinds of shit that I just only have a kind of tertiary knowledge of. So anyway. Yeah, well, also we're, we're just doing this on amateur, uh, as amateurs goofing around on the internet. So mm-hmm. there- With you- our time that is supposed to be breaks from work. Like when I'm supposed to be eating a sandwich, I'm like, okay, I'll do some podcasts now. <laughs> And uh, all the things, all the time I'm spending on this not being a writer, which is my actual job. I literally started working for the first time in forever on. Uh, I have a I have a horror series of novels, and the first oh, yeah. two came out like right on schedule, a year apart. The Dead Circle now available the dead, on Amazon. The Dead Circle and its sequel Beneath the Snow, and the third book of it I have just decided was is boring to write so i have and so like i picked it up for the first time yesterday in a long time and i'm like i really need to finish this because i have like maybe two fans but they really want to find out what happens so uh at some point good at niche audiences keith it's kind of what we excel at. i have i truly have found a very even smaller than the out of practice niche so Anyway, uh, but, you know, do check it out. I promise I'm writing the third one. It's coming. Uh, now, all but, right. But, oh, are we, have we yeah. already started Filings and Subpoenas? Okay, forget it. We are, we are another in time. Filings and Subpoenas right now because we have more. Uh, Phoenix has more to say, and he actually has Good point. A, this one's a good point. Your Honor, Your Honor this verdict is crap. The truth was concealed and must be You're behind, Mike. Out. You're behind. <laughs> Those are precious milliseconds we'll never get back milliseconds phoenix says i have a correction class action refers to a lawsuit filed by an individual or small group acting on behalf of a large group thus far the firm has only represented individuals against corporations or the epa individuals 
A typical class action suit has dozens or hundreds of clients and requires years of work, so a small firm would be unable to handle it on their own. We actually uh, talked about this with the asbestos case, which never happened. Uh, however, their victories yeah, were significant go? because, yeah, right, because they created a precedent that could have made larger firms confident enough to start a class action suit and spend the money to put the word out to potential clients that were harmed by the offending corporation. Uh, very good distinction there. And a perfect example of a class action, if you go and uh, better call Saul, the whole thing with uh, the nursing home, mm-hmm. him and doing the TV ads to get clients to attract people to call them to join the class action suit. That's a good example. Uh, very good point, Phoenix. Yeah, and the, and I think a, a distinction there that's important is that, so in a class action lawsuit, which I've been a part of, I think at least two that I'm aware of. So every once in a while, you'll get a piece of mail that'll be like, hey, Capital One Bank uh, was using predatory tactics for collections or something. And right. here's a check for 63 cents. Or that right. happened with that right. happened with Google once. I got a check for I think a dollar and six cents for something that happened with Google. Oh, because Google Home was listening to us and stealing our oh, audio great. and not telling us or whatever. Oh, great. So that dollar and three cents, my piece of the pie of that billions of dollar settlement is much smaller than the parents of our uh, of our slide our swing set lawsuit who are gonna would receive a much larger piece of that X amount of million dollar settlement. Right, right, because it's an individual. Right. Good so, point. Good catch. Good catch, good point. Okay. Keith, we should really be more careful with when we use nomenclature, legal nomenclature. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, we should have a set of bylaws. Uh, <laughs> we should have a, a visual style guide for my editing, which changes LUTs every week. And it's, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. I really, <laughs> there's uh, a lot of we should have. We should be more careful in literally everything we do. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's the least of our legal problems that we should be more careful about. I know. I, I feel that I came dangerously close to mocking the health of the president of the United States uh, literally 20 minutes ago. <sighs> yeah. Well. Honey, God. it's a secret service. Can you get that? <laughs> it's a secret. I think well, they watch my podcast. Well, I, I think I mentioned last week uh, the screenplay that I that I wrote that I'm going to do a reading of soon. Now that is going to get the Secret Service <laughs> at my house. My God, I'll be in trouble. All right. What we need to do now, how to escape from the Secret Service at our door for our mild treason is to hop into the time machine. And we hop back into the time machine to October 29th, the year 2000. And it makes us ask the question, what were you doing? This day in the basement. Oh, man, the thing's wrong. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Oh, God damn it. Ah, damn it. Milliseconds, Mike. Milliseconds. Um, I want to do it in reverse today only because uh, we have some nice things prepared and you have an, of an actual visual. So let's start with you, Keith. Why don't you tell me what you were doing October 29th, the year 2000, days before our hearts were crushed by... The presidential oh. election and the Supreme Court. Uh, but yes, before in, that, I'm sure there was some merriment. Yes, yes, there was. It, well, I mean, obviously, uh, next week, next episode, uh, we will get to what happened in Bush v. Gore, etc. But uh, I, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago um, that I had was living in the dorms with my girlfriend at that time, and we had set up our own apartment, and there is little 20-year-old Keith with his fuzzy girlfriend in our dorm room. I, I said I'd find a picture, and here it is. And I like to point out a couple of amazing details. One is the mini disc player on the desk, which was a mini disc recorder. So all of the recordings I had at that point were actually done on that little. Oh my God! You zoomed in. How did you do that? I am a magician. Of, you are a of magician. Technical wizardry. I had that same stereo exactly. Everybody did. Well, it was so fancy because it had that thing that, that when you turned it on, it like the it was, <laughs> came down. The three disc changer stereo with dual audio cassette. So if I oh, wanted shit. to, if I wanted to dub an audio cassette, I could, but I didn't need to because I was using the future of audio technology, the mini disc recorder. 
Uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was us in the dorm room there. This was the bedroom, and we had a living room, which was the other uh, dorm room. And uh, yeah, so this was, if you're ever wondering what the inside of an Eastman dorm looks like, it's that. We put those shelves up ourselves. Uh, yeah, and really just leaning into the mom jeans. We really yeah. we wouldn't so leave who's the house there too. Who's was that a is that a homemade quilt? That was yeah. She was a terrific knitter, and so she knit the whole quilt. It's, I love uh, the mini disc. Remember that? Did you ever have a dad? I never did have a dad. Uh, I know that uh, Sean certainly had dads back in the day, but uh, Sean will be chagrined to know that my first major at Ithaca College, I think I've mentioned this, was uh, uh, audio recording. And uh, we had to do a lot on debt and also reel to reel. So uh, it's a shame oh. that I never got to the actual how to mix and master. <laughs> so our podcast suffers, but uh, you know, <laughs> I just fiddle. Or sync. Yeah, or sync. So it is crazy. I was like, nope, not, not going to work out for me. So yeah. Well, anyway, that is, you can see all my CD collection because, you know, kids, we used to listen to stuff on CDs. Uh, so there it is, as promised the picture of my dorm room set up in October of 2000. Uh, amazing. So, oh my God, the jackhammering. So, as I said last week, I was sort of in like, goo goo gaga land. Yes, you were. Showman. Showman's town. And uh, listen, Keith has been, though I have shared some emotional moments and I've choked up a couple of times on the podcast, I, I've i not been as forthcoming musically as you. <gasps> yes! So I recalled as I'm thinking about this period of time that I wrote a song for my then girlfriend. Yes! And at 19 years old, I had yet to turn 20, which is this year. At 19 years old, I wrote one of the cheesiest songs. Oh, yes! Oh, and I tucked it away. I tucked it away. And Keith, I, I swear to you, I did all that I could to find this. And I could find it on CD but I don't have any way to rip a CD currently. None of my devices have- What? You don't even I, have a, that's crazy. I don't, I have nothing. So I thought, I, I still couldn't let it go. And so I thought today, as a special treat, I would perform for you live. <gasps> it's a live performance, holy shit. To be fair, all I remember is the hook. So it's only a couple of measures, but oh I can't, God. I'm sure the verses were really bad. This the is hook the best is thing that's ever bad. happened. Um, so I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to do it legit and not laugh at myself as, okay. as we have to respect the emotions of 19 year old kids, right? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not saying that I've gotten better as a lyricist. In fact, I've pretty much given up entirely in that department. But regardless, I even brought out a different microphone. Let me see yes. if I can get over to the, the proper. Okay. Oh, I hear the jackhammering now. When you breathe, I will exhale. In your arms, I will not fail. I will feel your hurt. I will. Yes. Yes, that was you know what honestly. Like I you know, I'm going to give you some shit. I mean, I I normally would and I, I plan to. I, I I have I've got some things loaded. But <laughs> but honestly, that's a that's like a terrific song. Like I think you could release that. People would like that. Uh you know, I did at one point I'll 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 I'll, I'll admit now 20 years later that uh, at, I won't say who. So at some point some person in my life was like, will you write a song for me and my uh, my fiance and sing it at our wedding? This is somebody we both know, by the way. Really? Uh, it may or may not be uh, our stage manager from Titanic. Oh, 
Oh, cool. Uh, and I was like, sure. And then as is generally the case with me, Keith, I mm-hmm. totally forgot that I had made this promise. <laughs> so I roll to the wedding and she's like, okay, I can't wait to hear the song. And I'm like, oh my God, I promised this person I would write a song for their wedding. And you <laughs> blew so I, uh, so I, so I had to load up Early this song. 2000s mic. So I had had to load up this song that I had already had written for my girlfriend, clearly, and just right. like, say that I gave it to them as a gift, which whatever, no harm, no foul, right? But now years later, we're talking 20 years later, once a year when their anniversary rolls by, there's this big Facebook post being like, oh, here's our song and play it. And I'm like, oh my God, first of all, I'm embarrassed oh that God. I stole this tune for myself. Second of all, stop playing this song I wrote 20 years ago. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, oh, I'm it's still a, on It's a great shows. song. It's a great track. wedding song. It is a good wedding song, I have to say. You know, everybody likes a cheesy wedding song. You know what my brother had me do for his wedding? I have to share this. And maybe I'll mm. play it one day for the yeah. pod. I shouldn't flame my brother on the podcast. Um, he doesn't listen. That's true. He wanted, he wanted uh, With or Without You from you too. He wanted sure. me and Jen to do the duet at his wedding. And I, and, and I was honest. I was like, look, have you listened to the lyrics of that song? It, it, it's not really, it doesn't feel romantic <laughs> in any way if you listen to it. So he's yeah. like, well, what if I rewrite the words? And I was like, um, that's a choice. I'm going to rewrite you too. Great. That's a choice. And so he did. And uh, <laughs> and we did it, you know, like what I'm, who, I didn't ask for criticism. He just asked if we would write, if we would sing it. So we did. Right, right. And uh, I can't, you know what? Maybe not for the pod, but I'm going to send to you the lyrics. Oh, and I. That my really brother rewrote to for you that. too. Uh, Perhaps we can anyway, perform it together. It's a duet, right? It is a duet. Yeah. It well, is a duet. There it is. Okay. Wow. So, uh, well, anyway. Okay, all right, I, hold on. I, I have blushing? a lot of thoughts. Okay, please. You, you tried to filibuster through my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, unfortunately, the Dems, the Dems ended the filibuster. Yeah, right? Uh, no, I mean, like I said, I actually really like that song. I think that's totally uh, you don't a need doable it. song. I don't need it. Uh, my, my only question sure. is, is the first line, uh, I, I will exhale, I will exhale when you breathe. You yeah, are making yeah. a lot of promises not to have halitosis. Because if you're breathing into her breath. mouth directly, you better brush those teeth, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that is test. I mean, you're taking it very literally, but I guess that means like <laughs> if you got hit, if you died, I would perform mouth to mouth, which you would think, hopefully you would do even for a non-loved one. Oh, oh, I see. All right, all right. So if you stopped breathing, I mm-hmm. would exhale. When you breathe, I will exhale. So yeah, I don't, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it, I knew that it was, I was, I think sometimes I set up rhymes in reverse. Sure. You know? Sure. Well, and, uh, you know, I also wrote a song for a wedding of a, of a mutual person we both know. <laughs> and Who knew that our podcast would become so incriminating? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, instead of, oh, we love it, we're gonna we're gonna play this song over and over and over again. Thank you so much. Um, the response to the song was, "Oh, okay." Then they got a divorce. So Shazam! <laughs> well, it's you know, uh, I have I remove all com- comedy from my comedian from myself right now. Unfortunately, uh, our friend's wife passed away, and uh, so it's oh, like right. a double doozy because oh. every time she plays the song, it's like a memorial, and I'm like. It was just like a, I forgot to keep my prompt. Here's a song like that I pulled out of my catalog to sing for. And now it's become like a tribute. Oh God. Well, but that's, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe that worked out the way it should have. It did because I don't date this girl anymore. It's not like she needs a song. So I'm glad that it, it was written. Now it is officially their song because it sure as hell ain't mine. If, if it is serving a purpose, if it is helping somebody, if it's making somebody happy, then great. It's the greatest song. It's a great song. It's the most amazing song. <coughs> it's a great song. <laughs> now, Keith, we've reached our, our quota of schadenfreude today. Yeah, uh, things that might not age well. <laughs> <laughs> like a TV show from 20 some years. Yes, What's with me in the hair curtains today? Oh People my weren't God. expecting a mimosa today. I, I, I'm just a little loopy. 
Yeah, me too. And we're 40 some odd minutes into this. All right, it is time to move Shit. forward and stop talking about ourselves. Because we, we haven't recorded a pod in like almost six days. So we've only talked about ourselves for like four hours a day. Spent more time then, so. with you this week than Jen. <laughs> it is now finally. It's time for the Out of Practice Podcasts This Day in the World. The greatest hits, the biggest movies, headlines from Vermont, essential sports updates, and for some inexplicable reason, the weather from 20 years ago. Now back to Keith and Mike. Okay, we are, of course, talking about October 29th, the year 2000. And we were still listening to Come On Over, Baby, All I Want Is You by Christina Aguilera. And, of course, the cover of the Burlington Free Press, talk about uh, Timely, said that political ideology trumps specifics. If you unpack that sentence, it has some relevance yet. (laughs) Yeah, really. The top movie, of course, was Meet the Parents in its fourth week of domination. All right, thank you so much. Actually, you know, that movie held pretty pretty big significance because it began the De Nerosance, the com- where his comedic career really began. That's true. At that, yeah, he was like, I need work. I'm going to be funny now. And, and it, uh, it worked. And then he briefly made a return to acting recently, really. And then uh, he's now retreated back to just uh, grumpy old punditry. Basically just uh, <laughs> becoming, a, exploiting a caricature of yourself mm-hmm. for comedy perpetually. And so, really hating Trump. Really hating Trump. Uh, well, I, I have no problems with that. All right. It's time. It's time. It's time, it's time for sports. 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 Well, I'm going to show you something this week as opposed to reading stuff because it was a very important. All right. Thank you. This was a very important week in sports ball. So I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to show you what happened this exact day in the world of sports ball, October 29th, the year 2000. And we've got a clip. Meanwhile, the New York football giants off a bye. Remember, teams are below 500 off buys this year. But one thing Jim Fossil has done is always been the Eagles. Seven straight over Philadelphia, including week two this year. That's right. When did winter the New York football Giants played quarter, the Eagles. Start, Meadowlands, Kerry Collins dumped the Tiki Bar. And tiki. beat them mercilessly. For 36 24 yards. With to 7. And here raising the, the Giants record to it's six Ron and Dane, two. You see no yard. game it's Dane Dane there scoring a touchdown. Schubert. We had another quarter, touchdown from Amani Toomer. I kill your look at oh Mike Caldwell. Yikes. He got up. Eagles can play D now. Oh boy. Minute that was 30 a big left head. in the half, third and five. And the internet fair use rules tell us that's all the clip that's that we'll be watching. That's all we today. can do, but the New York football giants crushed the Philadelphia football Eagles on a day that I enjoyed a great deal. Which means it's now time for weather. No, no, no. No weather. I love now torturing you by playing the segment, even though you've already told me we're not yeah. doing weather this week. I'm still going to play it. But one of these weeks, you're not going to, you're not, you're never going to know when t- uh, true crime is coming or maybe a weather segment or maybe me just going like this. Like a weird doctor <laughs> sketch that no one's prepared for. <laughs> It wasn't funny anyway. Plus, <laughs> is now going to air about three weeks after it happened. So right, really. and it's going to be and and it's going to be wildly inappropriate after <laughs> like something horrible happens. No, we need him to be well. Yes, we do. Because yes, we despite do. all of this, the two super soft shelled libs still somehow respect the office. Well, and it's it's not you know like look we. Nobody likes Trump, and he deserves lots of horrible things to happen to him, but nobody deserves to die, A, and B, it is bad for our country. It is much better that he just loses and goes to prison, and we move on with our life. But it is now time. I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value, and I'm not going to take this anymore. It's time.
<laughs> uh, this cool. episode is season five, episode four, Appeal and Denial. It was written by David E. Kelly, of course, and a new writer joins the show, Lucas Writer. Not W-R, but R-E-I. This is his first to practice episode. He also wrote a lot on the Firm TV show. He wrote 51 episodes of The <laughs> Blacklist. And he is now mainly a producer, but he will get an Emmy nomination as a writer for this show. But we're not going to talk about it yet because we are this still... This episode? Not this episode. Okay. But later. This okay. was directed by Dennis Smith, who last directed Honorable Man. Which leaves us with only one thing to do before we watch the show. What is that supposed to mean? What's your problem? Is this what happens to women when you insert your penis? What? God! No. What does Mike think's gonna happen? You know, what if he would have drank the curdled milk? Then what would have happened? I'm reporting you to YouTube. Is that too much? <laughs> I mean, Frott said it, not me. That's true. That's true. Look, the previously on last week told us all, we were going to get a rehash of all of our cases, but we only really got two out of three. All we did was like, Rebecca said something to Bobby about something in his case, and then we saw our guest star, whose name I have no idea to remember, uh, got mad and like freaked Bruce out. Bruce Davidson. Bobby again. Bruce Davidson, yes. So I think we're doing one of these, Keith, Keith, Keith a capital A case to this week. We're going to deal just with the appeal of Keith Ellison. Uh, is that his name? No. Not 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 at all. No, that's... <laughs> You just made up a name. It came to my the, my frontal lobe with such confidence, and then as I said it, I was like, "You're you don't know what his name is. You just asked and still don't know." In fact, no, no, not that's all <laughs> patently wrong. You just made up. Well, whatever his name is, Bobby's case with his buddy who maybe killed his wife and the brother lied. All that crap. We're gonna Bubba Wallace. Gonna, no, it's gonna no. come to a head today. Uh, which is not uh, a big swing. I know I promised big swings. So here's what we're going to find out. So yeah, let's get that big swing. I can't believe it. So um, some, during this episode, we're going to learn something, Keith. Oh, okay. Well, no, I'm going to tell, tell you what we're going to learn. And it's going to explain why Bobby is a little bit more frantic than usual. We're going to see it. We're going to see almost Bobby McRambo this week. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Lindsay's pregnant. Lindsay oh. is pregnant. We got a pregnancy test here. This is telling me Lindsay is pregnant and Bobby, somehow uh, it, it's going to play a big factor in Bobby's emotional state in this episode. Wow, look, he broke the code. He broke the code of the secret code. Did I? I don't. Am I right? Well, well maybe, maybe not. Oh, man. All right. And now it is time for you to switch over to your favorite podcasting service of choice and listen to us, listen to the episode. You have probably stopped listening by now because we've almost wasted an hour of your time and we haven't even talked about the practice, but it's now time that we're going to do that. Check it out. I did, but that's because we're back, baby. Yes, Make sure you, indeed. You turn off your thing and you go to your YouTube and you do all the stuff. Oh, the keep your crop, your, your crop went to hell again. Oh yeah. God! But we're back, baby. We're back. Hey, there baby. we are. Okay, folks, you have now watched the practice season five, episode four, appeal and denial. And if you haven't, don't worry. We have a segment that has your back. Entitled Mike has 30 seconds to remember what just happened on the show. Oh, y'all, I missed five seconds already. So much crap happened. A uh, lady got pushed down the stairs. Then she said she didn't get pushed down the stairs because she was afraid her husband was going to beat up her daughter. So she uh, lied and lied and lied and lied and recanted. And Helen was like, no, you can't do that. But she did it anyway. And it turns out, guess what? He got off anyway. So now it's like, uh oh. And in the other case, they finally get out that guy's name where I can't remember. They get him out of prison because. The brother got caught in a lie and a lie and a lie and a fifth amendment right. And so Bobby, get a, he got a win. Yay. Oh, and Eleanor's pregnant. <laughs> and? 
So is Lindsay. Yeah, there you go. All right. We got well, a double baby bump. We got a double baby bump. Double baby bump. That well, that was uh, you did not get that in thirty seconds, though. That, I'm 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 sorry. I'm gonna I I can't allow it. Yes, so I don't unfortunately, it. Right. Uh, I'm excluding it from the evidence. So clearly, uh, Eleanor and Lindsay are not pregnant. Okay, it's but fair. you know what we are going to do. We are pregnant with the prospect of. Ladies and gentlemen, the Out of Practice podcast, in unofficial, unsolicited, unfactual association with David E. Kelly Productions, proudly present. Oopsie. The Oopsies. Celebrating excellence in acting good, lawyering good, guesting good, and being Tom Brady. Not to mention, this is where we rate the episode and stuff. Now, here are your hosts, Keith and Mike. Uh, uh. What the hell are the oopsies? Well, they're a fake award show we do at the end of every episode, beginning with... Most this one's a tough one. You know, we get to finally like go against the grain on um uh the the having to win. Well, I guess no, not really. I guess we're going right back with the grain. Here's the thing. Bobby did not quit on his old buddy, and there was plenty of reasons he could have. He kept pushing. They they played every possible angle, and in the end, though they got sort of a, a deus machina-esque uh, Hail Mary catch from the Fifth Amendment, still, he got the win. He got his buddy mm-hmm. a new trial, and, you know, there's no guarantees, but... Uh, I think that as far as value, the man is out of prison and he began the episode in prison. So if that's not valuable, I don't know what is. Yeah, well, I think this gets down to results versus effort uh, Mm -hmm. that we've certainly talked about a lot because like Bobby, he didn't really do anything. Everything he tried to do, he failed at. He couldn't get Helen on the stand. He couldn't uh, get this guy to to testify about being lying. So it, it was sort of, he succeeded by the failures of others, which I personally am happy to do. I think that's the only way I've ever succeeded, but I'm not sure for me that gives you an MVL. Consequently, Rebecca, uh, she won even though she lost. She 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 won even though she shouldn't have, and she knew that she shouldn't have. So you could argue that she did her job admirably and with integrity, and she got her client off, which was her job. However, I'm going to go in a third direction. Even though she failed miserably, I have to give it to Helen because I thought she did a good job with the hand that she was dealt. I thought she made a very compelling close. Even though the victim had recanted, I thought she did a good job of A, figuring out what was going on and articulating it to the jury, even though they didn't believe her. So, uh, I, I, you know, here we go. Phoenix, moral relativism, even though she lost, I'm actually going to give mine to Helen Gamble. So, Keith, though I already awarded mine and I'm going to stick by it, I'm going to add mm-hmm. a little value to yours because... Okay. How? Because regardless of her, her moral justification, how does that provide value? you know, most valuable lawyer. And and I suppose you could also continue your argument by saying in that scene where she explains that she figured out the game to Frida, right. she potentially gives Frida the the permission, the the under that a little bit of compassion and understanding that, hey, I know what your plan is and I hope that you have a step two. It's not just get out of this situation, but have a right. plan for protecting you and your stepdaughter. So hopefully moving forward, they don't just run around the same circle of abuse and that they uh, they plan an escape. So if we're, if I kind of like give myself the happy ending where that takes place, uh, Helen absolutely t- took a part in that. Yeah, well, and, and perhaps Helen telling her that I am your ally, even if you worked against me in this case because I understand what's happening. And perhaps just the the act of being seen and understood will have value. Or maybe Helen's saying, like, you can kill him, I, I won't prosecute. 
Yeah, or I'll help you get out of it. Well, I'll, 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 I, I know a good firm to help you out. Yeah. Either way. All right. So, congratulations, Bobby Donnell and Helen Gamble in a loss. Next up. Already famous because you've been on TV. Getting a paycheck. Getting a paycheck. Your IMDb. Way to go. Or your first ad on your IMDb. Oh, we missed it. On the episode. How dare you? <laughs> no injuries this week. No injuries. No, I uh I, I did, however, uh intentionally fake being out of sync. <laughs> okay. I, made this, I, made this, I made this in wood shop in I think sixth sixth grade. Wow. Pretty good. Really right? in really ingraining the narcissism early, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. I think everybody uh, had to do their name, Keith. It wasn't just me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Says the wall of narcissism behind me. Yeah, right. Let's uh, zoom in on those. No, they're, that's pretty cool, actually. I like that wall. Zoom in on my wall of narcissism. All right, so on occasion, I really enjoy the... Um, it only takes a couple scenes to, to really make me enjoy something. And though... I think I know where you're going to go, so I, I don't mind a splitsy here. I want to actually... Oh, I don't have his name in front of me. I didn't open IMDb. Darn. I want to award Judge Wolf. Who played Judge Wolf? Ah, uh, Daniel Davis. Daniel Davis. He had he had such a great scene of just collective disgust with his ego when just being challenged. But then in Chambers, when the Fifth Amendment came, and so now he's pissed that, oh my God, someone perjured themselves in my court and I can't do anything about it. Um, all of that was so, could have been seen chewy, but mm -hmm. it wasn't. It was believable. It was, it seemed justified. It was well-written. It was all of the things. And I thought he performed it really well. And he's been great in his subsequent episodes as well. So I think that collectively, I'm going to go ahead and, and swing the oopsie his way. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's fair. I mean, he's, First of all, he's he's Moriarty on Next Generation, so mm -hmm. obviously that should get you a half an oopsie just cause. Um, but I do think he did a he he does do a really good job and was able to be sort of the villain and the hero in in one episode. So I'm I'm with you there. Uh, but you are right. I I am definitely uh, gonna throw my oopsie towards Diane Benora, who played Margaret Wakefield, who I just thought did a a much more compelling version of that character. Because, you know, this character of the uh, the abuse victim who recants and goes back to the person for whatever reason is a bit of a, a bit of a trope, a bit of a, um, a stereotype. And she it's a bit of a posture, her, a bit of a dance. Yeah, she, and she played her a little differently. And I, with a, a stronger, more intelligent, more... Um, I don't know with intent. With intent, what she was, what she was doing, and I and I liked that role, um, both the writing and the performance of it. So congratulations to Diane Venora and Daniel Davis for your fake awards. Now it's time to give out another one. You killed your podiatrist or blew the case, but you let a single tear run down your face. You're the best actor on the show. show. Uh, sh shout out to Cameron, by the way, because she had the one scene and she had the one scene where she got to announce she was pregnant and with barely any lines and it was compelling and she's just, she had that, like that's, you know there's a whole story there that we don't even get to hear. Maybe we will going forward, but Lord knows her as a character or her as an actress doesn't have the the next scripts probably yet. So, but still it was so full of just hit, so good. Just so good. She's got yep. the oopsies to show it. Uh, but a lot of great performances this week, actually. Rebecca, or excuse me, uh, Lisa Gay Lisa gave Gay a great performance. Yeah. Uh, Dylan gave a great performance. Everybody, Richard Bay, I mean, across the board. But I was really, once again, reminded of how great... Uh, Oh my God. No, I'm not going to help you. Lara Flynn Boyle was this week. Uh, mm. I just thought, once again, she, her compassion, her rage, her newfound 
you know, and it, it's not just, you know, I kept using the term retcon and though the writing feels a little retcon for Helen's character, but she never plays it that way, Lara. You can tell that she is this new sort of righteousness is, it's new to her as well, or she's, it's, she's finding it, it's being developed. It all feels in real time, which is just, that's acting, y'all. <laughs> that is what yeah. actresses do. So I'm going to throw my oopsie to Lara Flynn Boyle this week. Yeah, no, I, it's clear that she is doing the work to justify the character choices so that she's not just in like, all right, I guess I'm the good guy this week. She's doing, she's making sure that, that the character, that Helen's internal logic works and we're seeing that. And I, and I, I do think the logic works. Like I, I don't feel like it's necessarily shoehorned to have her taking this kind of a turn um, based on what she's gone through. But I like being able to see all of it on her face. And, mm-hmm. you know, while the the moment where she put it together during the closing is always a little bit pushed on TV because, you know, you, you have to sort of spell it out for the dumb, dumb audience members. Um, but I thought she did a really good job. So I agree with you wholeheartedly that Laura Flynn Boyle is this week's best actor. Okay, coming up next. The Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady. Uh, Let's just discuss last week's because I don't know that you're going to have time to do it before I want to push this so that we can have a couple in the can. So the winner last week was... Oh, eight-month-old, eight-month pregnant Tom Brady. And I have done it. Don't you worry. Oh, great. Well, then then here it is. Here it is. Oh, man. So, wow, we didn't even know. You knew that there was more pregnancy stuff coming up when I said eight-month pregnant Tom Brady, but you didn't You didn't let on, Keith, which is pretty it, awesome. It's a whole mini arc about pregnancy. Last week mm-hmm. was about pregnancy. This week's about pregnancy. And as I, if I understand how pregnancy works, we'll probably have more of it. Can they all be pregnant? Uh, so, I guess... it. it <sighs> Look, there's very there's a lot of minds in this minefield of Tom Brady Ward this week that I, I don't want to make any unnecessary jokes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, about domestic violence or anything like that. That's that's even though the NFL is rife with it, so it would fit probably. But I'm going to then just go a different way, make it more meta, and say that the winner of this week's the Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady is non sequitur Dunkaroo's product placement Tom Brady. <laughs> Non sequitur, Dunkaroos product placement. Tom Brady wins the Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady. That was the safest of all choices. I'm proud. Because I was I was gonna make a president with COVID joke, but I've saved us all uh, frequent visits from uh, future ridicule. Oh, or future like oh shit. Litigation. We, we're gonna have to delete every episode we've ever done. Uh, Keith, what do you need me to edit this week? No, 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 I just need you to delete everything. Can just you just go ahead and just wipe the entire it? podcast? Just pretend like it never ever happened. Perfect. All right, but you know what does happen every week? Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to announce how many spare tires this episode gets. Well. We, these, let's see, it's episode four of the season. We're still talking about the same cases. I'm happy to wrap it up, the Bobby Donald case with his buddy, but even though it's not really wrapped, he just has a new trial. So many things are happening. This week felt to me a little bit all over the place. Like, I, I think my prediction that we would streamline to just an A case was more of a less a prediction and more a desire. A wish list. Really, yeah, I just need a little more focus. I think it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. A lot of the, we've talked about the serial nature of things and I love people who are pregnant and there's a lot of great character story ready to go and, and it's very furtive and I'm excited about it. But as far as like, a, what did you think about this week's episode? I still, it feels a little disjointed. I love the stuff with Richard. I, I, the table's just set for something and, and I'm waiting for it. I don't know what I'm waiting for, but it feels mm. like I'm waiting a little bit. That said, great performances this week. Interesting case. The the a lot of interesting points raised. So once again, we find ourselves in this spot where, like you said, at the end of season four, we were we're at like peak practice, and I feel like we're still there. I will also say though that I, I love the addition of Richard Bay to the main cast. Love it, but 
I feel like it's come thus far. It's still at the sacrifice of Eugene and Rebecca. Why can't they? Why can't we all be playing right now? Now mm. Jimmy's not in this episode, and Eugene hasn't been in an episode. He's there, but he's not. They're not giving him anything. Right. Right. And all of these things make me like just feel a little unfulfilled, although I'm glad Bobby's back. Uh, we need, I don't want to, I don't want to make it like the episode was bad because of those things. You know, that's sort of me commenting on the show where I'm trying right. to focus on the episode. And I think it was strong. It's not great. La if last week was a 7.5, I think I, I still think this is a better episode. So I'm going to say 7.75 spare tires. Okay. Mike. No, I think that's fair. Uh, I, I do have a question. Can you still see me? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, you can. Okay, because my mm -hmm. Skype is uh, is crashing and burning, but I can still hear you. So I'm just going to believe. I'm going to believe that you can see me right now, and that you can hear me right now. And I will. Uh, I will say this about um, this episode. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you on all those things. Like it's a perfectly fine episode. It feels like a like a really good sort of mid-season episode where you're just sort of like thrown out a decent case and some good performances. But mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been waiting, I think similar to you, for a standout episode. I think this has been sort of a fine beginning to season five, but I, I'm, I'm just like, I want to start off the season with something exciting. You know, by now in season two, we had Joey Herrick in, mm -hmm. in you know, and... I'm just wanting something to be a little bit, you know, and and season four, you had George Vogelman dancing around and killing people, which was ridiculous, but it right. felt like a season opener or the beginning of a season. So this is, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Season was fine. Performances were fine. The characters were fine. Um, I'm, I'm not as, com I, I, I think similar to you, I'm not as compelled by this, uh, you know, Bertrude Big Bobblefock case mm -hmm. as as I think they want me to be. Um and you know, it's not there's nothing technically wrong with it. Bruce Davidson is a good actor. The sort of setup with um yeah, both sides having sort of fucked up on the beginning of the case. It's all fine. It's just it does feel like the, it, it lacks some stakes though, right? Like they keep feels like they keep trying to raise the stakes, but I don't feel like who is this guy? What's his relationship to Bobby? Like, why do I give a shit? Well, and this, I I think that's exactly it. Like, just because he's one of Bobby's old friends doesn't make it special. That's literally every episode. I feel like you're right, because because of not having the stakes, because we don't know this guy, we don't really care about this guy. If this were Lucy on trial throughout mm -hmm. this, then I'd be like, oh, shit, now I really care about this. And all these sort of minutia that's taking place over a long time, I'd be like, I'm there. Or if the actual case itself were crazier in some fashion, um, like he blamed an owl for killing her, like the staircase. I don't know. Like, uh, that would be, I don't know. That's a, that's a very long way of saying, like, yeah, so, eh. Uh, so I'm going to give you a, eh, grade with a seven. Okay. So seven, seven point five. So what are we like a math? Math. We have math. I think it's three point seven five, but seven point three seven five. I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? Nobody is paying attention. But you have gotten your way through another episode of the Out of Practice podcast. If you would like to reach us, you can find us on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Out of Practice. You can email us directly at Out of Practice Podcast at gmail.com. You can check out our blog with our definitive ranking of episodes at Out of Practice Podcast.blogspot.com. The Out of Practice Podcast is brought to you by generous donations from Leanne Wrights, Cloud Lover 69, Jorge Navoa, and Jennifer Masanova. If you would like to join them, you can donate to the podcast in one of two ways, a monthly donation or a single contribution to the show. You can find links to do so in our show notes. If you are in any way financially unable to support the pod, no problem. Don't send us a cent. Instead, give us a rating or review. It does help. Or just tell a friend to check out the Out of Practice podcast. Keith, the time yes. has come. I would like to stand on top of the steps. I would like you to give me the hardest shove you possibly can. And at the very bottom, I will look up to you with scorn 
and disappointed in, in, in my eyes ah. and fire off as many verbal laser sounds as I can. <laughs> laser sounds. Oh, that was violent.